what's up guys welcome back to my channel you might be able to tell if you've been following my channel for a while i am in a new environment in fact i'm kind of in like a whole new life right now kind of nervous right now because i haven't filmed in so long and i just don't <laughs> I just don't feel like comfortable with it the way that I used to. I am excited to start filming again and to start just like doing videos as a hobby again. You guys know as I've said in many of my other videos that I just like the whole process of video production. I like making a video, editing it, fine tuning it, putting it up, hearing your guys comments, connecting with you. Just like the entire experience, I really do like it. So I have decided that I am going to start filming again. And if you're new here, my name is Taylor. Right now, I am going through a divorce. Without getting into it, I am totally, totally being weaponized for my mental health. And it's probably been one of the most demoralizing and humiliating and degrading experience I've ever had to go through but that being said it's also really thickened up my skin and really made me you know want to come forward and really kind of like represent and get out there what my struggle actually is and what it actually looks like and I really want to you know share about it so that I can help spread the word and normalize some of the things that I go through they are a little weird and a little crazy if you will but they are manageable and I've learned many techniques through hours of therapy and just months of dealing with these types of things. Basically, I've learned how to cope with them and I wanna teach other people who are going through these things as well how to cope with them. So that's my little spiel. So welcome back to my channel. I'm probably gonna be changing my name from the ASMR cause yeah, I'm not gonna be able to set up and do ASMR the same way that I used to at my other house. I'm in a whole new house. Like I said, whole new life right now. I'll probably just change it back to Taylor Brittany. But yeah, if you've clicked on this video because of the title of the video, I will have titled it something to do with anxiety and derealization. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. So without further ado, let's just kind of get on into this video. All right, going back to last December, my anxiety hit an all-time high and basically a uh, panic attack disorder set in because of all the panic attacks I was in and out of hospital thinking I was dying um, I was on and off a few different kinds of meds and in the end all oh, my little Siamese cat wants to come say hi look at my girl Meow, look at your beautiful eyes I got my little pet and she's got her little nails did so she doesn't scratch the cat your prettiest, your prettiest ever. Mm. Started having these panic attacks, started having really intense symptoms, like bodily symptoms, and just like really felt like I was losing my mind. I ended up finally going to a hospital in Newmarket when I just was at my absolute wits end and I just felt like I was not getting the help that I needed in my hometown. I ended up going to Newmarket meeting my psychiatrist who I have now was a blessing, absolute blessing because he was the first person who was able to really pinpoint what was going on with me. It was when I got diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm going to do a whole video series that I'm gonna call Crazy Talk. I'll get into my OCD and what that looks like for me and what my compulsions are and how I deal with them and how I overcome it and just everything that has to do with OCD. But today we're talking about derealization and depersonalization and with OCD is a very high level of anxiety, very severe anxiety. As a part of having severe anxiety, one of the symptoms that I experience is something called derealization and depersonalization. So what is it? Derealization is a mental state where people feel very detached from their surroundings and depersonalization is a mental state where people can feel very detached from themselves. Some people will feel detached from their body, from their thoughts, from their feelings, or a combination of all three at the same time. It kind of looks and manifests differently for everyone. Derealization and depersonalization can be a disorder. It can can be something that is a complete disorder of its own and that's only if it goes on chronically which is pretty much from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep and it sticks around for like more than a year then you're looking at 
you have derealization depersonalization disorder but to actually get diagnosed with that disorder like it has to be very severe all the time medication isn't helping therapy isn't helping and it's just kind of like always there and you're kind of like always stuck in it. It's definitely on the more rare side. However, experiencing derealization and depersonalization as a manifestation of anxiety is very, very common and very, you know, hallmark of severe anxiety. So something to note about it is it's completely harmless while obviously it's an extremely distressing experience for the person experiencing it. With OCD, often this is gonna be experienced as an obsession to feel attached again and to feel present again, basically to feel normal. So when derealization comes on, it's a form of dissociation. Body is like in fight or flight, fight or flight, fight or flight. And then what happens is like, it's almost like a forceful shutdown. If the brain was saying something, the brain's like, holy shit, your reality <laughs> is too distressing for you. So I'm gonna take you out of it. It's completely harmless. You can still, you know, do your life, operate. You can still move through your life, do the things you need to do, accomplish the things you wanna accomplish um, with that feeling. Um, happening in that mental state kind of like being there but it's just gonna kind of be there and the reason it's not like a psychosis is because when people are in a psychosis they don't know they don't know that something is wrong they don't they don't know like oh I'm not right right now like I don't I don't feel okay right now like if they were to check in with themselves whereas with derealization or depersonalization you know there's a there's many symptoms that it can manifest for everyone it can manifest in so many ways but one of the main things is feeling like you know you're kind of unreal feeling like you're kind of like in a movie um some people feel like they're in a simulation um that the world around them just seems kind of different and unfamiliar and but it's not a psychosis because when you're experiencing it as the individual a part of it being so distressing is the fact that you know you shouldn't be feeling that way and the fact that you know that you didn't used to maybe maybe your thoughts are like i never used to feel like this um maybe they're like oh, i don't want to feel like this i want out i want to feel normal that's the distressing part of it there's such there's a huge struggle with the feeling because you're like ooh, 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 i don't like it i don't like it so derealization is very much an experience because i experience them both all the time <laughs> Well, first of all, let's actually go back to the very first time I ever experienced this. It gave me a absolutely catastrophic <laughs> panic attack because I truly thought, I truly fucking thought for damn sure that I was broken, <laughs> that my brain was done and that I had began to go into dementia <laughs> and the first time i ever experienced it i kind of feel like it was medically induced from prozac thank you prozac i was on prozac trying it out for the first first time i think it was day four i'm on a walk at the at the time with my family and i just look around and i just feel like everything around me is fake nothing around me is real this life is a simulation and I'm just kind of like, I've never thought that way before. I've never felt that way before. My body's just like, the adrenaline's just like amplifying, amplifying. And I'm just like standing there. And at the time, my husband, I'm looking at my husband. He's like looking at me and I'm just kind of like, like getting more fucked up <laughs> physically and mentally while I'm just trying to process like, what are these new thought patterns where is this coming from and everything around me i felt very disoriented everything around me felt very oh it's so hard to explain it is awful feeling and i was in it and i was in it for that first time for nine hours and i remember feeling like what the fuck is going on with me <laughs> And I was so scared and I really thought I booked an MRI, I booked a, what did I get after that? I told my doctor something was seriously wrong. I got blood work, I got an MRI, I got everything. I was convinced my brain was literally broken. It was done, that was it. I was, it's time to bring me at the age of 28 into a nursing home like that. <laughs> yeah, first time I experienced it, definitely was not feeling good or right or safe or normal or anything, felt very, so after that went to my psychiatrist was like 
yo <laughs> this happened to me i'm not good bro <laughs> it ain't good and he basically was like oh <laughs> my psychiatrist first of all i think he honestly prescribes himself <laughs> i know he probably probably not i joke but i honestly feel like this man is on so much xanax because he's just like very like floaty very like oh don't even worry about that that's just derealization and i'm like <laughs> so yeah he gave me some terms and i ended up getting a dissociation specific therapist which i definitely recommend if you are going through these feelings um it's not the same type of dissociation that people often see in the movies where all of a sudden i'm sitting here and i'm just somewhere else no it's not like that started getting very specific with my therapy telling my therapist you know like what was good what was happening to me i had words for it so it was easier to get the help that i needed that's basically what ended up happening from december even till today is i still have to actively seek out the help that i need for this thing and you know it's kind of one of those symptoms that is stubborn and is the last to go um unfortunately you know as i have learned um because i've had anxiety in the past and started medications and felt better and was back to life very quickly um and then what i ended up learning with this is that sometimes unfortunately it is it is really the last symptom to go and that is because of the brain body connection and the fact that it's a form of dissociation and it's a form of your brain shutting things down and shutting stress down so it doesn't go away fully or completely until the levels of stress have been very managed for a while and of course my dpdr and stuff has been acting up a little bit for me but I know how to deal with it and it doesn't stop me in any way in life with my current levels of stress that i've been going through and you know it's just been a fun time but that's what that's what we're going to talk about on here i hope that if you're watching this and you've been feeling this way you feel less alone and you, you know you get something out of it but basically the way that i experience it now and today is like i said transiently and um you know it comes and it goes now when i go through that because of the therapy that i've had it really does not affect me i f i feel it come on i go through it and i'm just like oh whatever but what was happening in the beginning when it would happen is i would struggle i would really struggle internally with it and there would be a lot of compulsions that i'd be doing i'd be looking at my hands being like okay no you're real you're real this is real this is real like pinch yourself okay you're real you're real look you look you're not in a dream you're real you're real because i just i felt so scared of the way that i was feeling so the most powerful thing that i do for myself when i'm feeling this way and i just want to say again and again and again and again in this video no matter how intense it feels it's absolutely harmless it does it won't stop you from driving because if you don't let it it won't stop you from driving it won't stop you from working it won't stop you from making friends it won't stop you from eating and sleeping and bathing and taking care of yourself and reaching your goals you cannot let it make your world small which is unfortunately what a lot of people do and what i had began to do in the beginning i remember i was in the very beginning i was afraid to be left alone with my kids i was afraid to work i was afraid to drive and i had to learn through therapy no bitch you're you're gonna do life and you're gonna take these feelings and you're just gonna invite them along and you're just gonna and it's called acceptance and commitment therapy and basically it's like Ooh, you know i'm feeling this way right now and i really fucking hate it but i'm still gonna go to that party and maybe everybody that i meet i think that we're in a simulation party and it's not comfortable and i'm having all these intrusive thoughts because when you're in that state a lot of people experience it as kind of like an existential crisis type theme of like these like whooshing intrusive thoughts that's like you know somebody may shake your hand and you're all of a sudden you're like why do we shake hands that's peculiar like it's very it's very weird it it almost feels and it's kind of funny. <laughs> i have this one friend of mine and we all we talk on facetime um shout out to kirsten if you're watching this and we both go through this and basically we, we've talked about how like sometimes it feels like maybe you're just very woke 
in life and to the universe and everything because when you're feeling this way and remember it's just a feeling and just like any other emotion just like happiness sadness anger anxiety like it, it's gonna come and it's gonna go and it's gonna flow and it might come back and it might stay for a while and you might not want it but no matter what it's gonna come and it's gonna go and it's gonna flow I have a few mantras uh, one of them is this too shall pass and nothing lasts forever um, the nothing lasts forever one really helps because if you're experiencing it you know when you start feeling it coming on you're like oh no like how long am I gonna feel like this like am I gonna feel like this forever like am I gonna feel better ever like whatever and the biggest way that I cope is by telling myself like nothing lasts forever this is fine and then trying to just move on and it's like I feel like that but but it's like, okay, what was I doing? Okay, I'm gonna do the dishes. Okay, I'm gonna go to the park with the kids. I'm going to do the laundry. I'm going to do whatever. Because the second part of that is distraction. And the best way I find to cope with it is to be distracted, to stay distracted, to you know do things that make me really happy, that I really enjoy. You know, like if I'm having a really, really bad day, you know, it doesn't always have to be things that involve money, but like, you know, something that I will do if um, I'm feeling really bad with it is I'll go, I'll get my nails done or I will rollerblade. Um, rollerblading is extremely grounding for me. Um, reason being because it forces me from an outer body state into, into my body because if you're out of body while you're rollerblading, you are going to eat shit and die. <laughs> which I have done before. You know, taking a shower can be really grounding. You know, people like meditation and stuff like that, but for me, what I find doing is just anything that really pulls me into my body, like taking a nice hot shower, going rollerblading. Um, if I have to go to a store and I'm having an especially anxious day or I'm having a really tough, um, you know, derealization, depersonalization type symptom day, um, I use ice. I use ice because it can calm down your central nervous system and your vagus nerve. So I put an ice pack on my chest, usually in my shirt and my bra, um, and I will focus on that cold feeling on my chest and I will remind myself I am here and I am safe and I'm going to accept these feelings and I'm going to allow them to be here. Um, because what I've learned is really because of the amount of trauma that I've had in my life, um, because of the things that I've been through. I, my body is wired to be overly anxious and to dissociate and there's a certain level of acceptance that I need to carry and I need to invest to be able to heal and recover from some of these things and to really, you know, come out on top of them and that, that's, that's probably like the biggest thing too is just that radical acceptance. It's called radical acceptance and it's actually a part of my therapy. Um, one of the things that really helped me is reframing the way that I feel. So I used to be like, oh my God, like I don't feel real. Like I feel horrible. Like I feel <sighs> like, and be freaking out. Now when I feel that way, I'm like, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm in a movie right now, but it doesn't fucking matter. And I'm just gonna do what I need to do. The thing is, is like, if you focus on the way that you feel, when you feel that way, you're just gonna continue to feel that way. The way out of it is by not being afraid of it and just allowing it to be there. And just being like, okay, I'm going to take this, this, this awful feeling. I'm just going to take it along with me. Like, guess what, derealization? We're going to a baby shower. Guess what, derealization? We're going to work. Guess what, derealization? We're going to sit in front of the mirror and do our makeup. <laughs> That's something that I've struggled with because depersonalization is like this feeling of like, you don't feel real. And sometimes, you know, you'll look at like, a mirror and you'll feel like you don't look like you and it can be kind of a triggering experience even filming for youtube even editing my videos and stuff you know anything where you're staring at your own self-image for a while when you're in depersonalization and stuff that can be really tough but just kind of being like okay i felt this way before and i'm probably gonna feel this way again and there's literally no point in getting afraid of it i'm just gonna go about life I'm just gonna do what I have to do. I'm just gonna get my car, drive to the store, do my groceries, you know, like that kind of thing. And then the other thing that I do that helps me cope, it's actually a part of some uh, therapy that I did for my OCD. When you have OCD, you do exposure response therapy. And the way that I do exposure response therapy for what makes me really uncomfortable, which is depersonalization and depersonalization and derealization type feelings is um, 
I'm basically embracing the feeling. I'm not problem solving the feeling anymore. So before, when it would first start, I'd be like, okay, uh, they say that if you work out, then it's gonna stop. So I'm gonna work out and then I would work out and then I'd be like, do, you, do I still feel like that? Do I still feel like that? And I'd be like, fuck, I still feel like that. And I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna drink some water. They say drink some water. And then I drink some water and I'm like, mm, do, I feel, do I feel better right now? Like, do I feel better? Mm, no, I don't, you know? And then I'm like looking around, trying to be like, do I feel like this is real? Do I feel like that is real? Do I feel like I'm real? Do I feel like everything's good? And that's, that's the OCD part of it. That's where the compulsion, the rumination, the checking, checking, checking comes in, which I can get into in other videos. But um, basically the exposure and response therapy for that is like the intrusive thought comes in and it's like, oh my God, am I gonna feel like this forever? I'm gonna be like this forever. I'm never gonna be normal again. And the exposure response therapy piece that I've learned and that I do all the time, sometimes multiple times a day, is I answer those thoughts by being like, yeah, I feel this way right now. And I, I hate that, but it's fine. And I'm cool with it. And it can stick around and it can stick around for as long as it needs to. And maybe I will feel like this forever, but I can still have a good life feeling like this. And I can still make memories of value feeling like this. And I really just have to challenge it and answer every intrusive thought with like a an uncertainty answer so like OCD is a illness that seeks certainty 100% certainty at all costs and so something that and something that I want to get tattooed on my wrist too which is like a way to deal with the intrusive thoughts is like maybe maybe not so you know the intrusive thoughts come in like I'm never gonna be normal again the OCD says that the intrusive thoughts say that if you don't have OCD but then you know I'm saying like well yeah, maybe I won't ever be normal again, but maybe I will, but I won't know, <laughs> you know, just kind of like challenging it and kind of playing with it back and forth with the thoughts, right? Because when you're in derealization and depersonalization, the thoughts are just like, they just pommel, pommel you, they pommel you, right? Anyways, guys, I hope that that helps. Uh, oh, the last bit that I'm going to talk about is medication. Now, I'm still trying to find the perfect medication for me. Um, I have had some medications that work better than others. I have had some that work for a while, then they stop working. Um, currently, I am on one that is really helping a lot. It's actually, I'll just be completely honest about it. I am actually going to be really honest in these crazy talk videos. And one of the medications that I'm on is actually a microdose of a antipsychotic. And it has helped tremendously with the derealization and depersonalization piece. I, you know, even if I experience it, I experience it at such a minimally distressing level that I'm able to navigate it with the skills that I've learned from therapy and just go about my day. It never really stops me anymore. It really just doesn't fucking stop me anymore in my tracks like it used to. So that's been helping and episodes have been like <sighs> rarely occurring. There are certain times of the month, like when I'm PMSing, that I kind of go through this stuff more and I kind of go through it like heavier just because anxiety is worse then. Um, but again, gonna get into that in many other videos. If you guys wanna know the medications that I'm currently on that are helping with my derealization, depersonalization, and anxiety, and take into account that you obviously have to talk to your family doctor and your psychiatrist about if they could work for you, but I am currently on Celexa. Um, eh, I'm currently on Celexa, like 10 milligrams or something like this. I don't know if it's working or not. I don't know. I know it's definitely working for depression because I don't go through like serious depression anymore. Not the way that it used to at least. And then the, what's been helping with the anxiety and the derealization the most is the Abilify. Um, it's kind of prescribed in an off-label way because it's mainly for schizophrenia and bipolar. It is, um, you know, basically the way that I look at it and the way that it works is it's it works with the antidepressant as an adjunct to help the antidepressant work better and to kind of break any really irrational type thoughts that come along with you know severe anxiety and severe depression and it's been a godsend um unfortunately i do not believe that i am somebody who can do this on my own i don't think that my brain chemistry is like working in my favor in that way um i have tried it and it has not gone well 
Um, so I am definitely a huge advocator of meds, even though that is an entirely different topic in itself and it will be on this channel um, and in the series because I've been on so many different meds and it is quite the roller coaster to find the right one and I totally get it. Anyways, I hope that this video has helped you guys. I know that's probably all over the place when I edit it. I'm scared to see like how all over the place it is. But I just want to, you know, say shout out if you are going through it. My Unreal crew, um, I know that it is very intense. And sometimes you're so ashamed of the way that you're feeling that you don't tell other people even about it. Um, because you don't want to feel like you're going crazy. But if you're feeling this way, just know that you're not going crazy. That you're just having a very natural response to high levels of anxiety and stress. Um or at least your body wants to think that you're going through high levels of anxiety and stress so it's trying to pull you out of it it's it's actually it's funny it's it makes you feel so abnormal but what you're going through is so normal because it's a part of the human experience and that's what I have to remind myself sometimes is like the exact thing that makes me feel like the weirdest person I know is something that I can't control because it's a part of the human design you know, and um, it's not activated in everybody, but it has been activated in me. And if you're watching this video, it's probably been activated in you and that's okay. So yeah, do some of the things that I have like talked about. Hopefully they help you as well. And I'm excited to share more about the mental health stuff with you guys on this channel. And yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well wherever you are in the world. And if you are new here and you liked this video, give it a like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know. Um, I always see and read the comments and always reply. So yeah, anyways, for now I'll see you in my next video.